story of homelessness, of course, can be told in many ways. All around us are folks that we may have seen or noticed in public places. We may have encountered them in the hospital or in the library, grocery store line, or on the bus, or on the library line, places visiting others who are without home. The reasons why are as different as every person that we meet. Some have a sister, a brother, a parent, a co-worker, or someone some, no one, no somebody who's homeless, all the, uh, those of us here obviously know someone probably who is homeless, and it may be somebody that we're related to. It does make a difference when someone is known because we pause and identify that there is someone out there that needs to be recognized and that we are here to love and appreciate this. We won't solve the problem of homelessness tonight, and there's many reasons why we can't. We live in a day and a time where people fall through the cracks, and we all know how that happens, especially those of us who are leading flocks of people. There are some that we just aren't able to help in the way that we would like to. But there are programs in place, and we hope that as we become better informed and as we stand together, that it will change, that there's a potential for change, that there might not be a good one for you. We confess to the tragedy of the situation of homelessness, and when we put a face to the ever-increasing population of homeless people, and when we acknowledge the population of children who are homeless, and that that is a number of them, then it takes our notice, and it tells us why there's a outside in the weather, and we would have stood outside even if it had been raining, but God chose to give us comfortable yes. settings. But we'll take that too. <laughs> we know that we must do something. We must call attention to the people who are without a home. All people deserve to have a shelter. All people deserve to have a home. So here, we're here to bring support, and part of our support has come in the way of of uh, blankets and hygiene and food and blessings that we uh, gather together in the space. Now I'm certain that there's someone in our Kitsap community that has died alone this year without any knowledge of their death. And we're trying to do a better job of finding out what their names might be. But until then, we're just here to acknowledge that someone probably has died without that notice, and we're going to recognize the sign mm. we have done with that What little we do here has merit because God is in our midst. God is our eternal hope. I call on Pastor Richmond Johnson to bring us in. We know we just so bow our heads, close our eyes, get our mind off of our pain. For our mind, praise, peace, the help we have from God. And we're praying. Father God, we come just now thanking you for being so wonderful, so so marvelous. Lord, we, we just thank you for, for, for creating us in your image, Lord. And we thank you, Lord God, for salvation that's free to everyone who calls on your name. And Lord God, we ask, we believe just now that, that, that you're right here in our midst, leading us and guiding us and helping us to understand that we are not to look down on anybody unless we're going to stop and pick them up. Lord, we, 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 we just thank you that you'll continue to convince us that nobody is so bad or so messed up that they can't be made into somebody that you can use. Lord God, we all are unworthy, but, but, but we've all been willing to do what you call us to do. So make those who are out there on the outside not knowing your will come to the understanding that you love them and you have a marvelous and wonderful plan for their life. Lord, we come ask that you would counsel every plan the devil has for the homeless and for those who are standing in the gap for the homeless and help us, Lord God, to be the people who want to meet needs because you told us that you will supply all our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for this church. We thank you for this pastor. We just, we just thank you for a relevant ministry that reaches beyond the walls and wants to build bridges in the community and help those 
who we just talked about that might not even have their name mentioned when they die. But we just thank you that you know all our names. We just thank you that we are all valuable originals. And we just give you all the glory and all the praise for the lives that, that are going to be impacted through this ministry and through the supplies that we have on hand. And we just thank you, Lord God, that you continue to show us that you look down to the lowest level and you showed us when you revealed yourself to the shepherds and let them be the only ones to get the announcement that the king was born. Let us all know that we matter to you and we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you all the thanksgiving that the best is yet to come and we believe that you're going to give peace at this time of hour. You're going to continue to help us know that the police are our friends. We come against that murdering spirit that would try to assassinate our police and we come ask that you would bring us together and stop us from being divisive in race wars and we give you the praise right now for what you're getting ready to do. Let's just put our hands together in Jesus name and thank him on credit that the best is yet to come. Amen. 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 Praise God. <laughs> Every person has a name given by God and given us by our parents. Each of us has a name given by our stature and our smile and given by what we wear. Each of us has a name given us by the mountains and given by our walls. Each of us has a name given by the stars and given by our neighbors. Each of us has a name given by our sins and given by our longing. Each of us has a name given by our enemies and given by our love. Each of us has a name given by our celebrations and given by our work. Each of us has a name given by the seasons and given by our blindness. The foolish Shem, Shinat no do, Hayam, Danat no do. Each of us has a name given by the sea and given by the earth. It's a poem by a very famous Israeli poet whose name, she's like Cher, she's called just by the first name Zelda. <laughs> People make pilgrimages to the grave. A beautiful, beautiful poem. So it is the sixth night of Hanukkah. Um, so some of uh, us have come together from my congregation, which is the very end of the street there. And we've brought our Hanukkah called Menorah. Menorah means lamp. Hanukkah is one specifically for Hanukkah. It has eight lights, so this is the sixth. Oh, it seems I seem to have brought one too few candles. Oops. Let's see if there's one in that. Yeah. Let's see, if not, I've miscounted. No, nope, I not. Okay, well, we'll do the last one at home. Um, We'll yeah, we'll imagine the sixth <laughs> night. So I'd like to uh, yeah, that all stand in. <laughs> so I think it makes of I think the lights of the Hanukkah. We light the candles. We start with the newest light, and we light. We increase. The first night is one night, and at this darkest time of the year, we add light one by one by one until on the eighth night. This is the helper candle by which we light the others. We have the whole Hanukkah filled. So I thought this was a very nice reading that talks about the blessing of light. The light of life is a finite flame. Like the Hanukkah candles, life is kindled. It burns, it glows. It is radiant with warmth and beauty. But soon it fades, its substance is consumed and it is no more. In light we see, in light we are seen. The flames dance and our life burns down and gutters. There is an end to the flames. We see no more and are no more seen. Yet we do not despair, for we are more than a memory, slowly fading into the darkness. With our lives we give light. Something of us can never die. We move in the eternal cycle of darkness and death, of light and light. And so we will kindle the lights of our Hanukkah. We say specific blessings, and we'll chant them, and I'll uh, say the translation so you know. Do, you want to light both of the Shamashim? Mm -hmm. They've got a heavy duty, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Shamashim. 
Shamash just means helper. We like this be. So as we light, we chant these blessings. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kiddushanu B'mitzvotav V'tzibanu L'had Nikne Shel Chanukah That means, Blessed are you, Eternal Lord, our God, ruler of the universe, who has commanded us to kindle the lights of Hanukkah. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, she'asa nisim avoteinu, mayamim ha'ahem ba'azman hazeh. Blessed are you, Eternal One, our God, who did miracles for our ancestors long ago at this season of the year. So the miracle will be if our candles remain. <laughs> it is traditional to light them outside, but in Israel, particularly Jerusalem, is very cold in the winter. Um, they have these little plexiglass things that you put over with the holes in the top so that it's ready-made. So we lack those here. Um, but most of us in America, it's not the same climate as Israel, so we light our candles inside generally. So people of many faiths for, for literally thousands of years have found comfort in the words of the 23rd Psalm. It is a song that gives our hearts strength when our hearts are sore and when we have suffered loss. So let's read responsibly in your program, words of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my, is El me or someone else? Yeah, El is the leader. leader. Oh, El leader, okay. We have R, like Rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> Just the means. We go with R and C. <laughs> congregation, <laughs> congregation. And also the, the, the uh, uh, we'll try it. Go ahead. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures. The Lord leads me beside still waters. The Lord restores my soul. The Lord guides me in my paths. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff give me courage. You, you prepare a banquet before me in the presence of those who would not do. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Goodness and grace will follow me all the days of my life, and I will live with you forever. There is love all around you, there is joy on the wind. Stretch your hand to your brother, and life will begin. Stretch your hand to your sister, a new life will begin. There is peace if we seek it, there is truth that will win. There is God in our sister, God is love that love is. There is God in our trouble. God is love, love, love. There are tears all around you. There are souls without friends. Feel the pain of another and that love. And let love bloom again Like a stream growing stronger Love is shared friend to friend And goes on to the Father Love is life without end And goes on to the Father Love 
love is life without end. I invite you to pray with me when I pause to say, blessed are you. Please join in the response. Blessed are you, Lord our God, sovereign of the universe. Holy One in whose care we are born and whose care we remain, receive our prayer on behalf of those who lives without the comfort of who lives without the comfort of shelter, without a place to call home. We get in humble awareness and hopeful anticipation that this service of acknowledgement and remembrance will gather resources to feed and supply those who are at risk. Blessed are you, Lord, Sovereign of the universe. We stand in the dark, cold winter but only for the token of our time, recalling those who must use basic survival skills to get through the night. We are here on the longest night of the year to be a public witness that it is not acceptable to leave sisters and brothers without the prospect of shelter. We are here for this very short time to recognize our need to do more. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, Sovereign of the universe. We stand vigil and offer our prayers. We offer some provisions and ask you, O oh God, for wisdom and truth. We combine our voices to remember our neighbors and friends who have died without homes, to remember why they have died, to ask for your protection for those outside right now, we are here to listen to stories, to share our concerns, to stand in solid solidarity as we as well as to seek wisdom and grace. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, We are here to acknowledge the living nightmare of being homeless in winter, trying to, to survive in freezing temperatures, heavy rain and snow. We are here to acknowledge that homelessness has many faces that have become close to our own. It is always possible for as us to find ourselves homeless. As a community, our care. Help us to love and care for our neighbors. May what we do here to be an acknowledgement that every life is a gift and every person counts. Amen. Amen. And I so thank you, Anita, for stepping in like that. That's, that's out of your condition, too. <laughs> you stepped right into that. Thank you. You know, we're here to share stories, and um, we kind of let this part of the service be spontaneous to whatever someone might want to say or not. So we'll just open the the time for sharing with this amazing project. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll say something. Um, my name is Beverly Kincaid, and I worked on um, homelessness issues for a number of years in our community in North Kitsap, South Kitsap, and Bremerton, and now that I'm off the farm. And I want to remind you all that. Um, when you talk to others about individuals who don't have a roof over their head, we see this in print a lot in the media, in the Kids Out Sun, in other uh, publications, and they're always referring to homeless men, homeless families, homeless veterans, homeless this, homeless that, and always, always remember that not having a roof over your head does not define you as an individual. 
you may be a person with unique abilities, traits, skills, um, and um, attributes that we may never know. But homelessness does not, being homeless does not define a person. Never use homeless as an adjective. I just get very bitter when I see articles, news articles about this homeless man and this homeless family. They are a family, mm. just like you are, or I am, or anybody else is. And the fact that they don't have a roof over their head is not um, their defining factor. Amen. I was just reading, uh, it's amazing how I'm George Eats from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's amazing to me how timely the scriptures are. Yes. They're always, we think they, they've been written <laughs> thousands of years ago, yes. but yes. we are there. Yeah. We're part of that. And uh, in the 25th chapter of Matthew, it speaks about you know, what the Lord's talking about those who were less fortunate. Did you go visit them? Did you clothe them? Did you feed them? And so forth. And the, the blessings of the scripture is, you know, there's commandments given, but there's a blessing at the end of that if we're compliant to that. And it speaks about, you know, and, and people, <clears throat> sometimes they get caught up and, you know, even we can say, well, that's not my problem. I don't need to go visit. I don't need to do this. I don't need to do that. But, uh, and then there are those, and we're gathered with many of them, and we know this is a great community, and uh, there are many wonderful, wonderful people doing tremendous things. And then the Lord refers those who did go visit, and did close, and did seek out the hunger. And it concludes that the last verse is those who were less faithful not doing that their, their reward would be punishment but those who did do something about it like this community here and many others they had an eternal reward and the, so the it, very you know, voice that led them was the prophetic voice that, that's, that's right you know, and, 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 we get concerned about, you know, I don't see anybody here with the judge's robe on. <laughs> but we get caught up in judgments, you know, and, and the labeling. Is the, anyway, I, you know, as you travel throughout the country, you know, lots of churches put up wonderful billboards. And there is some very, very clever things on there that we maybe laugh at and are humorous, but they're so true. And I remember one, you know, when we get concerned about, you know, making those judgments, this billboard said, uh, let God, uh, we'll catch them and God will clean them. <laughs> <laughs> and so, that person that's uh, homeless, and I've had many experiences, and I'll never f forget the, some things that I observed and it was over in, in the Seattle area <clears throat> and we know how there's people you know out there uh, asking for something you know and this wonderful lady she was dressed so nice she could have stepped out of a fashion magazine and she was an older lady and she was kneeling down talking to one of those ladies in the I don't know what the conversation was, but I was standing up observing this. But when she got up, she kissed that lady oh. on the forehead. Mm. And I thought to myself, that could be the savior mm. right there. I can't help but uh, hear these little voices in the yard next door. Yeah. And think of the joy that um, it is. You have a shelter over your head. Mm. And the difference that that makes to a child or a family or a person. And that's why we're here. Yes. Because we care. And we hope to do something to do more than, yeah. than just 
this, but we also want to acknowledge that everyone is with that person of culture and that acknowledgement and that awareness that each one of us is in the Jews read uh, the Torah cycle. It's 54. It's divided in the Torah or Hebrew Bible. Uh, 54 weeks, although there's only 52, so we have a little bigger <laughs> <laughs> to do each time. But we also read a cycle of the prophets, we call them Nibi'im. And today, Shabbat Hanukkah, we read always from the book of Zechariah, Zechariah. And we read these words, which I think absolutely sums up what everyone has shared. Not by might, mm. not by power, mm -hmm. but by my spirit. Yes, Chris Frazier, I'm uh, the LDS Church in Manette, and I've been asked to uh, lead in this responsive reading by Isaac Watts. So if you can join me. Our God, our help in ages past, our help for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home, under the shadow of thy throne, thy saints have dwelt secure, sufficient is thine arm alone. And our defense is sure. Before the hills in order stood, for our earth received her frame. From everlasting thou art God, to endless years the same. A thousand ages in thy sight are like the evening dawn. Short as the watch that ends the night, before the rising sun. Our God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be thou our guard while troubles last. And our eternal home. Now we're going to try something, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> How many of you know, don't and know these podcasts around you? I see one hand. Anybody else? Oh.